Alright, hey guys, this is, uh, my newest LEGO creation. I mean, it's still a, very much a work in progress. Uh, so far, I have... It's a marble machine, obviously, I'm sure you can tell by... Well, let me get a good shot of it. Um, I'll go ahead and walk you through it. You've got, uh... This is where the marbles are staged. Uh, this pneumatic actuator goes back and forth and lets them go down one at a time. Gets lifted up by the chain. Comes up here, drops down. And here is a uh, track selector. Uh, one ball will fall, knock it over. The next ball will fall the opposite direction. And I'll probably have one or two more of these so I can have uh, more tracks available. Um, so if it goes to the right, it just goes down this little track here and goes right back to the beginning. Um, the other tracks will probably be a lot longer and a lot more uh, a lot more to them, a lot more interesting. Uh, the problem I had is once I got this thing built, it's not very tall. So I've really only got maybe six, seven inches of... Uh, actual downhill space that I can use and that's the only way I can really generate much motion with the uh, marbles is uh, through gravity. I'm sure I'll have other things, uh, pneumatic actuators maybe with automatic steps that go up and down or I could do another chain if I wanted to or I can start over and make it taller <laughs> um, but for now this is what I got and uh, so I'll start working on the other tracks later. It's actually like one of the most uh, advanced, or not advanced, but complex uh, pneumatic systems I've ever created. Because uh, this actually started as something completely different, at least this bottom part here. And then I started with everything else and built around it. It was originally kind of a factory remote controlled kind of. I uh, had a robot arm here. Had a pneumatic actuator on the front to open and close the jaws there and then it went up and down with that pneumatic actuator there like, uh, like that and there's some other parts in there from that this was uh, an idea the marble supposed to go down and knock these out and it kind of creates a core ripple effect but uh, I'm gonna have to totally redesign something that works a little better um, this is the main pump here it's got one uh, XL motor on it one to one gear ratio. It's also got the speed computer on there. Uh, when it gets into the higher PSI ratings, the uh, motor tends to slow down. And this is all ran off uh, one uh, nine volt regulator. And um, this is the Lego manometer that they, uh, the only place I know to get this, and I've actually got a, a picture of the box on the wall somewhere up here, uh, is through the Lego education website. And this set comes with uh, two large actuators, one small, uh, one large and small pump, a tank, three uh, of the valves, five of the uh, little T-junctions, and then of course the PSI gauge, which comes in handy. And uh, also your Lego boxes uh, make great posters if you want to uh, do that kind of thing. Well, this one even opens up. This is also a good set if you want to just upgrade your part count. It's got a, a battery box, two remote controls, four motors, and two of the IR receivers. And that helped immensely. Plus it's got uh, four of the new linear actuators, which I haven't really... I don't tend to use much. Uh, maybe I will later in the things I build, but for now, I mean, they're cool. I'm just used to using pneumatics and motors more, for, uh, more than anything. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and start it up. Um, not all these valves, they don't necessarily go to an actuator like you would normally think. They actually control functions. The yellow one turns on, uh, it sends air to the valve here, which is automatically turned by the uh, conveyor. And um, it goes, it releases the balls one at a time here. So it's actually time with the. Uh, with the belt, so if the belt is slowing down, maybe because the uh, the pump motors are taking too much power, 
then also the uh, release mechanism will slow down in time with it and it doesn't actually release on every one of these it's usually every other one and then every once in a while you'll get two in a row which is actually should work out pretty good for what I'm doing uh, this white switch goes to there's no pressure it goes to this tank if you want to use one tank and then that tanks always hooked up green switch is just a pressure relief uh, valve if you want to relieve all the pressure in the system the blue switch goes to uh, that actuator there which knocks over which engages the drive uh, from this motor to this automatic uh, it turns the, the valves every so often um, and just makes these actuators go up and down they'll actually go to something later on but for now it's just testing the pneumatic system to make sure that with the timing I have I can generate enough pressure and things like that which I did kinda have a problem with um, with pressure because the uh, the large cylinders are using a, lot, a good bit of the air and they do fine but the small actuators like that one and that one they actually tend to need a lot more pressure to uh, to operate something depending on what the load is because they have such a, a smaller uh, pressure plate like there's just the pressure area is just so much smaller you have to have a greater uh, pressure to be able to do any work with it um, this is the auxiliary pump back here it's got four of the small pumps and it's powered by that same motor going through universal joints um, this gray switch here turns that on and off like otherwise those pumps will just uh, pump away and all the air is pumped away it's not actually pressurized or used for anything um, and the way I did that was it it comes in through this tube um, one tube goes out from the middle one it goes out to the rest of the pneumatic system uh, the right side goes to um, this is just a block um, so no air can get past it so if it's pumping and you turn it if, and it's off it's actually going to go from this left nozzle into air into open space through the switch automatically if you flip it to the right then it'll go through there but um, and then this the since these are both going in since this is going in the middle and this is going in the right side if you turn it on it will actually um, it connects these two so these it won't let the air out of the original system but the air from there will actually not be put into the system so it, it actually works pretty well I'm kind of explaining it strangely but uh, oh well um, so I guess that's about it I'll go ahead and fire it up and show you what I'm working with alright uh, I'll turn off the auxiliary pump oh. This is a pressure switch. It's from a design from a guy online. Uh, I need different rubber bands. <laughs> and also the pneumatic actuator is kind of iffy. But it will pump. You continue pumping. It's actually a pretty high velocity pump. For, like, I mean, I've seen better, but I mean, for Lego, it does pretty good for what I'm doing here. So it pumps up between 20 and 30 psi, and, and um, this switch shuts off the, uh, the pump. Um, so I flip this switch, and now this is working. So it'll, one at a time, let a marble out, and there's actually a spring under there. And it, it works pretty well, because I wanted a, a good scooping motion. I, I tried a bunch of different stuff, and this just seemed to work the best. Alright, now I'll this is the landing ramp here, they just come down here. I gotta... Alright. So... So what I've got so far is this is one track. So go up on the belt, and be dropped onto there. Just to the flip-flop. Okay, that didn't work. I think the cat must have bumped it and changed something there and it worked that time. Um, that's all I've got so far. There's going to be a lot more added to it later. But um, basically I'm 
feeling this a weird way. It's not really about the marbles. It's about the complexity and what I can learn from it more than anything. But uh, I think it'll be pretty cool once I get the rest of it done. I've got a lot of work to do, so if you got any ideas, send them my way. Thanks for watching.